Hello and welcome to Sundays at the Chateau. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Stephanie, the Chatelaine of this 16th century chateau in the heart of France and now in the heart of the French lockdown. So thank you for joining me here in my bedroom in my quarantine. Those of you who watch my Thursday vlogs will know that just last week I was in Vietnam in Cambodia with my brother Gerald. We were having the most fantastic time sailing up the Mekong in a beautiful river cruise whilst the whole of Europe was falling apart. And when we realised the severity, we raced to get back to Europe on time. He had to go to England and I had to come into France. And this is what it was like trying to get back on time. Our epic journey is starting in Siem Reap Airport in Cambodia. We're on our way. Bangkok next stop, then Dubai. Bye bye Cambodia, you have been marvellous. Here we are in Bangkok. And now we've seen a Boots the Chemist, we feel like we must be getting close to home. We've landed in Dubai, now we've got to be tested. The holiday is just going from strength to strength, isn't yeah, it? I think every step is an obstacle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a nightmare of a journey home because when I landed in Bangkok I realised that Macron has made an announcement that he's closing the borders from midday tomorrow. Well actually that's now today and I'm not due to get back to France till tomorrow so I, I panicked. I have no idea what to do. I don't know if I'll be allowed into France if I get to England so I've managed to find an earlier flight that's going to Nice. Nice is nowhere near La Lande. And if I'm able to land there, if, then I will immediately just hire a car one way and drop it off in Limoges. We've got a room. We've got a room. I can't believe it. It's very strange. It's down a very long corridor. Everything about today is really surreal. It feels a bit like a computer game. I'm going to be able to get a full two hours and 50 minutes sleep before having to get up for the next flight without knowing whether the next flight is going to be allowed to take off or if new French restrictions mean it can't and if it does take off will I be able to get into France there are so many questions but I still have my flight to London in the afternoon if that doesn't work I'm a bit hysterical with it all actually here we are two, two, two. We have beds for nearly three hours. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'll be out like a light in seconds. This is the end of a long journey. It's a long journey. Apparently my flight is taking off and my Ryanair flight that I was supposed to go on tomorrow has been canceled. So in fact, if I hadn't booked this flight, I had no other option for getting into France. Now we have to hope it'll work, but I'm feeling actually very emotional about leaving Gerald. It's okay. With us. I've got a job. I'm, I'm collecting trolleys. Oh, he's staying at the airport, he's and decided. So I'm fine, I'm sorted. He's got to go back for his treatment, otherwise he'd be coming with me. I'm going to miss you. And I'm going to miss you. I hope I make it home to mummy. The plane isn't cancelled, we're actually taking off. You can't tell with the mask, but this is my happy face. That beautiful sight is the coastline of Europe. I never thought I'd be so happy to see Bulgaria. And now the Alps were in France. Oh, please, please let the French authorities let us land. They are aware of concerns amongst uh, some of you about your onward travel plans, particularly if it involves crossing uh, an EU border. From our side, uh, everything is absolutely normal. We are going to be landing in Nice at around about half past uh, the next hour. And this is my ecstatic face. Hello, France. I'm home. I've made it can't believe I'm in France and I'm going to go home to mummy and to the chateau and I'll be able to carry on vlogging whilst we're in isolation here. I'm so, so relieved. I can't tell you, I've had two very scary days. There is just one tiny insignificant problem, which is that I couldn't see my suitcase. And so I went and complained and said, you know, we need to get it organised to come here. And then I turned around and I realised that in the unclaimed suitcases, there was Jerry's. So I have Jerry's luggage here in France. He has mine in England. Jerry is going to have the most amazing evening wear and underwear to use during his lockdown in Framlingham. And I will have more tartan than I ever realized I needed before. I've got my rental car. It's quite snazzy. And now I'm just disinfecting it. Let's just try and stay as clean as possible. All surfaces that I'm going to touch are going to be disinfected. 
a mere 10 hour drive alone ahead of me and I'll be back in my own bed at home. I can't believe I made it, but my two day epic journey is finally over. It's four o'clock in the morning and I've just got into my own bed at Lalande. And now I am officially in quarantine. I can't tell you how incredibly relieved I am to be back here at the chateau in my bedroom and with my mother, even though I haven't even been able to hug her yet. I'm being super cautious because I'd done so much traveling and I was on a lot of flights to be able to get back here and every flight was packed as people were racing to get back to Europe on time. So I am quarantined in my bedroom and on top of that we are locked down in the chateau. The French lockdown means that nobody is allowed out of their home except for one of five reasons. And we have a form that we need to fill in before we go out explaining which one of those five reasons we're leaving the house for and we have to sign it, put our name, our date of birth, our address and carry an accompanying ID with us wherever we go. And we can only go out alone. It's not as though the whole household can go out to get some air and do some shopping. One person goes to do the shopping and that's it. And the five reasons that we're allowed to go out for are one, for essential exercise. Every couple of days we can go jogging or walking, but only alone and no communal sports. We can go to the grocers to get essential food. We can go to the pharmacy or to the doctor for health reasons. We can go and take care of our children or our parents if there's any kind of family crisis. And those who have a special signed form from their work saying that they cannot work from home are allowed to go into work. And that's it. Other than that, no one's leaving this house. And beyond that, I'm not really leaving this room because whenever I do go out of the room, I have a mask and gloves on and I just walk through the house without touching anything to get outside so I can walk around the garden. Luckily, we don't feel that restricted here because we're in 60 acres of land. So we're free to roam wherever we want every day, which is fantastic. And I do feel for people who are in city flats at the moment. And it's strange because even though we can't see each other that much, it's very reassuring to know that people that I love are near me. I like knowing that my mother's in the house and I had some very good news on my epic drive from Nice to Lalande. At about midnight, I got a phone call from the elusive Nick saying that Belgium had that evening announced the closure of their borders the very next day at midday and that he, Marie and Antoine had decided to leave immediately first thing in the morning to get out of Belgium on time and to come and spend the quarantine for however long it may be here at the chateau. So they arrived later on in the day after me and the three of them are quarantining together in the Guardian's house where Marie and Nick are both able to work from home and Antoine is being homeschooled. So there's this wonderful atmosphere that we're all in this together and all close to each other. It's day two of France's lockdown and I've officially woken up in my own bed. I'm so happy I made it. I'm so happy I'm here. I can just hear the birds singing outside. I arrived when it was pitch dark last night, so it's going to be good to see Lalande again. Let's get some fresh air into this room. We're lucky that it's very nice weather for March. Oh, look! I told you there was a beautiful sight. <laughs> that is a beautiful sight outside, <laughs> Mummy. <laughs> I'm so happy I'm home with you. Nick, Marie and Antoine have arrived. <laughs> it's strange how familiar life feels at the moment. The only real difference is that none of us go within three meters of each other and we shout a lot more than we used to. So we try and have conversations across the courtyard from one window to another, or we'll be sitting in two adjacent rooms and chatting on FaceTime because my mother's hearing isn't very good. So if I'm trying to speak to her from five meters away with a mask on, she can't hear me even though I'm shouting. And so she's just slowly inching forward. So I've banned that now. Now we speak on FaceTime, even if we're in the same room. I must say it's very fetching on you this outfit. What do you think? Yeah. You call me doctor. Ian has basically been single handedly looking after my mother. <laughs> yes. No, it's a good look, mummy. It is. It's a good it's one. Sure. I bet you within minutes. <laughs> mummy and I can only see each other through through doorways. How are you, mummy? Hello, my darling. What on earth are you wearing? I fully intended to go back to bed, you see, because 
Look at the weather outside, I can't go in the garden. Do you realise that blanket was a gift to me from one of the very kind women who watches the vlog? Look! <laughs> I am delighted to be using it. <laughs> very popular in this household that blanket i like that one i was wondering where it was well it was in a place i found it hmm. safe place well it's so safe now isn't I it i wanted to tell you that we have no heating in this house you see yes i know so that so i have I... to make do <sighs> but what i wasn't expecting was that there would be a lot of upsides to quarantine I get to just relax in my room all day with nobody telling me that there are chores to do around the house because I'm not allowed out to do them anyway. So instead of giving me jobs, my mother is actually delivering trays of food to me. And it's wonderful, I have this incredible room service. And because for years I've been doing the cooking whenever my mother's here, I'd forgotten she's actually a great cook and she pretends that she isn't because she hates cooking. But in fact, I'm getting delicious meals delivered. Room service. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> soup and a sandwich. Oh, something in here. A croissant. Life is sweet. I've set a little table up for the duration of quarantine where I can have my meals. This is a very light lunch of bread and cheese looking out over the courtyard and reading Interiors magazines for inspiration for when everything goes back to normal. And not only that, but I had the ingenious idea to hang a basket from my balcony in the hope that things might appear there. And the incredible thing is it's worked. Nicholas puts little treats inside it for me. What is in it today? Oh, superb Prince Biscuits. That's going to make tea time all the more exciting. Now I must remember to put the basket back just in case anything else appears in it later, but I'll bring it in at night to stop it from getting soggy. We're all aware of the terrible global situation that's led to so many of us living in isolation like this all over the world. And it's important that we're aware of it because it's important that we protect ourselves, our family and everyone else in the community, especially those who are most at risk. And we can do that by staying in our own homes. But once we have done that, we have to start looking on the bright side and seeing this as a time of opportunity. Yes, there are many losses in our lives. We are separated from many people that we love all over the world. Percy is in South Africa. Michael Potts is in Amsterdam. Michael Petherick is in Bamanye. Luckily, he's in a beautiful chateau in the countryside as well. Many of my friends are scattered all over the world. But let's be thankful firstly for Wi-Fi. If this had happened a hundred years ago, we would have had almost no way of communicating with people. But isolation doesn't mean complete isolation anymore. I'm seeing this as a time of enforced relaxation, admittedly unwanted, but nevertheless relaxation. And that should give us the time and the space to think about what's really important to us, about the people that we love and reaching out to them, about our health and looking after ourselves properly in a way that many of us don't when we're racing around working. Also to think about creativity. My father always said that the human imagination thrives when it's put under restraints. So when he was painting, he would often restrain his color palette and choose just a few colors that he could use for a painting. And he said that that would actually open up his imagination in other ways. And perhaps we'll find that as we're contained in our small areas, our imagination will be freer and freer to come up with things that we're interested in doing, things we want to delve into and with access to the internet, we have a wealth of human knowledge to draw on. If there's anything that you've been wanting to learn about or a new skill you've been wanting to learn or classic books that you've been meaning to read, this is the perfect opportunity. I'm going to spend this time revisiting the works of my favourite interior designers to give me inspiration for all of the rooms at the Chateau. Then I'm going to think about each of the rooms in turn and think about ways that I can improve them and make this house more beautiful. And once I'm allowed out of this bedroom and into the rest of the Chateau, I'm also going to be learning new recipes and coming up with menus for workshops and for bed and breakfast guests here in future. They may not be here now, but they will be once again when all of this is over.
There's also so many novels that I've been wanting to read for ages and there's a few piled up here but really my bedroom everywhere I look is filled with books and also some less highbrow things. I'm looking forward to catching up on quite a lot of Netflix series as well. And as well as celebrating the things that we can do whilst we're in enforced isolation, it's important to remember the things that we can't do and to promise ourselves that we will never again take them for granted when we have them back. Only last week I was travelling all over the world. I went from England to South Africa, across to Vietnam where I floated in a boat up to Cambodia, where I was able to meet people of different cultures to see the way people lived all over the world, jump on an aeroplane when I needed to move from one country to another, I will never take that for granted again because only one week later that is no longer possible. When I think of the millions of tiny moving parts that kept our world running and how each one of those tiny million moving parts was a person, I will never again take for granted how lucky we all are to be on this planet together and to have created this incredible society that works so seamlessly when things are going well. I will never again take for granted the freedom of just being able to walk out of my own home and into society without need for a printed form. And I won't take for granted the ability to run a business in this chateau, to be able to welcome people from all over the world here and to make that into my income because that's all disappeared for this year as well. I'm hoping that a lot of good will come out of this for all of us, both in the time in isolation and in the way we view each other and our world afterwards. I recorded that video yesterday and I chatted for so long that I made a video over half an hour long. So I've split it into two parts and the next will be up tomorrow. As you might notice around me as I was chatting were lots of parcels and in the second half of the video I open all of those parcels that have come from all over the world and show you the goodies inside. So see you tomorrow and as always a huge thank you to our patrons, especially our Marquis and Marquise of Lalande, Brian Woodward, Caroline Forster, Daniela and Brenda Gibbons and all the rest of you here. See you all tomorrow from quarantine.